Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to the virtual press conference for Flora and Ulysses. I'm Mickey Novak. I'm going to be your moderator for today. I want to thank you all for joining the press conference. Before I bring in our panel, um, I just want to remind everybody that you can type in your questions. Um, just make sure when you do that, that you put, if you have a different screen name on your screen, from um, what is in your text chat to type in your full name and your outlet. And I'm gonna be calling on you and your fabulous questions in just a few minutes. Um, but first of all, I just wanted to say how much joy this movie brought me when I watched it. I don't even know how to describe, it, it is one of those movies, it's got so many different genres. It's, it's an adventure, it's an action movie, it's a comedy. We've got a superhero squirrel, but most importantly to me, I, it's one of those movies that you laugh out loud. You don't just chuckle to yourself, you laugh out loud. <laughs> so I wanted to welcome and thank the people who are responsible for that. And that is our amazing panel. So holy bagumba, let's bring them in to the panel, to the chat. Um, they're super talented. And it's one of those rare things that we have um, today where we get to talk to the woman who created the books. And without her, we wouldn't all be here today. She just popped up. Everybody's popping up. Hello, everybody. Almost everybody here. So I'm just going to start with our introductions. First of all, she plays Phyllis Buckman. She is the fabulous mom in the film, Allison Hannigan. Hello, Allison. Hi. And hello. And dad, George Buckman. Ben Schwartz. Hello, Ben. Hi, everybody. She is Flora. She is amazing in this movie. You brought such a smile to my face. I cannot wait till you win your first Oscar. Matilda Lawler. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I'm twisting my mustache a little. He's a little evil in this movie, Daddy. <laughs> <Woody>. oh. <laughs> and then our fabulous, fearless female director. Yes, the yeah. lead. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> and then, of course, like I said, it is such a rare treat to have an author of a, an award winning book <laughs> that got turned into this. You're the reason we're all here, Kate D. Camillo. Welcome, Kate. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Very well, good. Thank very you. Good. Well, thank you. Okay, we're so all happy to talk about this movie. That's oh my gosh. I'm so happy to talk about this movie. I'm such a fan. I'm going to start with you, Kate. First of all, did I spot you in the movie by chance? Or do you have an IMDb page now? Are you now officially an actor? <laughs> you, you did spot me in the movie, but I'm not going to tell you where I am. And I'm not going to tell you how hard uh, I worked to get that nanosecond of fame. I mean, it is so, <laughs> if anybody ever gets a chance to go to a movie set, wow, you people work hard. You work hard. So yeah, but I'm in there. See if you can find me, yes. You are. I, and, and just to sort of start things off, um, I know for people who are fans of the book, may already or may not know this, but how did you decide to turn a squirrel into a superhero? Because I was like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's, it's a really long uh, story. I'm gonna try to make it very, very fast. Um, so my mom had a vacuum cleaner that she loved and uh, she passed away in 2009, my mom did. And in the last year of her life, she kept on saying, what's gonna happen to the vacuum cleaner when I'm gone? And I was like, why are we worried about the vacuum cleaner? There are bigger things to worry about. But when she died, I did as I promised her I would do. I, I took the vacuum cleaner so that it would have a good home, except that my mom had um, uh, a cat, uh, the world's most evil cat named Mildew and, and I'm <laughs> cats. And I couldn't bring the vacuum cleaner into the house because of all the mildew hair in it. So I had to leave it out in the garage. Every time I pulled into the garage, I would see the vacuum cleaner and it would make my heart hurt. It would make me miss my mother. Okay, I'm almost, I'm halfway through this story. Mm. Then the spring after my mother died, um, there was a squirrel on the front steps of my house, draped dramatically across the steps, clearly in distress. And he wouldn't move when I got close to him. And I didn't know what to do for him. I called one of my best friends who lives a block away. I said, help me, there's a squirrel dying on my front step. She said, do you have a t-shirt and a shovel? And I said, I do. And she said, get the t-shirt, get the shovel. I will come over there and whack him over the head. That's what she said. And all of this made me think about um, E.B. White's essay, Death of a Pig, how he was going out to feed a 
pig and thought about ways to save a pig's life. I've, I've thought about ways to save a squirrel's life and I combined it with a vacuum cleaner in the garage and that's the story. No, Ooh, you okay. didn't tell the, 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 the squirrel's okay. Uh, well, the squirrel left when he heard my friend saying, whack him over the head with a shovel. Yeah, you know, yeah, the squirrel's yeah. like, I'm no dummy. I mean, I was out there on the cell phone. So yeah, okay. I've taken up more than my fair share of time. I'm done now. No, oh, you won't. That was, was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was an amazing story. Um, Matilda, congratulations on this movie. Thank You're you. so amazing to watch. Every line that you uttered in this movie, I thought to myself, that could have been in the trailer. That could have been in the trailer. <laughs> it's like a dream. I don't know how you do it. And I heard Thank that you. there were a thousand actresses that were seen for this role. What was the moment like for you when you found out that you were going to be Flora? I was, it was, it was insane. So like, so Lena, I was, I was in this show, this Broadway show, and I was actually like in the middle of the city, huge crowds everywhere. And I got a phone call from Lena and I hold it to my phone and like, I can barely hear her. And I hear her say, you want to be in this movie? And I'm like, yes. And I'm <laughs> jumping around everywhere. And I'm like a dance. So excited. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was amazing. I was like, so excited. I love that you just, as you do, you're in a Broadway show and you get that call, right? <laughs> <laughs> Normal life. As a child, as a child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Lena, oh my gosh, such a beautiful, amazing movie. And like I said in the beginning, when I was introing, there are so many different genres mashed into this. Like you had to do so many different things not only that, I saw your Instagram, you, you had an actual squirrel sitting on your lap, like a trained squirrel. So can you just talk about this whole experience as a whole and, and putting all those pieces together? And, and the squirrel in this film is unbelievable. Like it's unbelievable how perfect it is. Mm. Oh yeah, Ulysses, I can't get enough of him. But the blueprint for most of the stuff that happened is in the book. So we were kind of lucky there. Apparently crazy, crazy things like vacuum cleaners and everything end up in Kate's home. <laughs> and then after that, we got to play with all kinds of things. I and mean, we got to play with, you know, stunts off of buildings and car crashes. And then like, it's just kind of written in Kate's brain and our writer, Brad Copeland's brain, who wrote for Rested Development. So he put all that kind of weirdness and fun into the movie. And then it was just kind of making it all real, which, you know, our lovely cast did. So it was a lot of fun just kind of making things a little crazier. We did use, I got to have two squirrels on my laps and they did, they were trained and they did tricks, but they couldn't do everything that Ulysses did. So then we kind of just had to create Ulysses. Yeah. <laughs> Allison, um, I have a two-parter for you. Number one, how many lollipops did you consume making this movie? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. We actually did keep a total, but I, I, I forgot what it, it, I think we stopped counting around like 37 or something. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever want to see a lollipop again or are you done? No, they were great. I was really happy, um, okay. you know, it, it, and it, I really loved that there was a conversation about it and I had to be really thoughtful about the lollipop because I was like, well, I don't want it too big because I don't want to like drool when I'm, you know, taking it out of my mouth and stuff. So, so we settled on a really good one. And then I, I got to try all the different flavors and I really, um, I stuck with fruit punch. That was my good, <laughs> okay. my good, good flavor. Tip. I mean, yeah. you're the connoisseur at this point, so you know. Right. Um, but my second question to you is, I, I heard you say that you got to, which I didn't even know, you're such an icon of TV and film, that you don't like watching yourself, but you actually watch this film with your kids. And yeah. could you just talk a little bit about that? Oh, my goodness. Well, they've been, you know, asking since the day we wrapped when they get to see it. Um, so it's been a very, very long wait, and we, we got to see it early. And uh, they were so excited, and I was apprehensive because I... I knew I was in it. Um, but I just like from the moment it started, I sort of like forgot that I was even a part of it because I was so engaged and, and then watching them and they were just so, they were so happy. They were like you said earlier, laugh out loud, like beyond belly laughs where we, I paused because I was like, well, they're going to miss the next scene. Cause they're like, like tears and and I was just, and my husband and I kept looking at each other like, it's so good. And, uh, you know, it, I just, uh, we, we were so happy and it was such a like new experience for me to like be able to not like um, just be critical of, oh, I should have done that, blah, blah, blah. You know, the like actor thing. 
um, and just really just be engrossed in in this wonderful movie. Yeah, I, I mean, I watched it by myself, and 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 when you're watching something by yourself, laughing out loud, you know it's really really <laughs> right. Mm. Um, ben, I heard something that you and Matilda have a magic trick. Oh that- my goodness, we haven't done this in a year. When did we film the movie? A year and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, so yes. maybe explain to everybody what that magic trick is. You can read each other's. Mind. No, they won't explain it. And they won't tell you how they do it either. <laughs> and, how, and by the way, how so, dare you call it a magic trick? It is. It is clear, no magic trick. Not at all. It is like we are able to zap words or people's names to each other's heads. Matilda, there's zero magic involved, correct? No magic. <laughs> okay. Okay. So do you care to give us a little demonstration of, of this? Well, this or is what I- would have to happen. Someone would have to whisper... Or whisper. Someone would have to in a, in a chat maybe send me a person's name. That's private you know, chat, so I can't. Yeah. See so it. Matilda can't see it, and then I by zapping by zapping it from my brain to hers, she'll be able to pick it up. Again, we haven't done this in a while. She, the the yeah. force would have to be so strong with us that it could go through the internet onto her computer, through Matilda's brain, out of her mouth. So if you can find a way, Nikki, to private message me. A person's name that uh, we all have heard of, maybe it could be an actor, an actress, it could be a writer, it could be. I also really haven't done this in a long time, Matilda, and don't quite remember how strong yeah. you were. This. <laughs> oh, great. There's going to be no problem, Nikki. Well, I just typed it into the chat. So maybe. Oh, but she can see I, it. I see it. <laughs> she can see it. <laughs> I can text you one. Oh, yeah, text me one. Oh, I got it. I sent it. I sent it. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Okay, while we're, while we're in the middle of that, oh, are we ready? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, you, let's do it. You, you nice. won't believe it. Sending texts take like two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It goes to like the moon and back just like that. <laughs> wonder, uh, prepare to be I, very annoyed because you won't be able to figure out how they do it. Okay, okay. here we go. Um, okay, first of all, Matilda, are you ready to do this? Because this is a public forum. 117 <laughs> people are in this room. People are now thinking it's a magic trick when of course it's not, Matilda. Tell the world. It is no magic trick. <laughs> okay, here we go. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. This time it isn't. Can you put your fingers on your head? Listen to the voice in your head. Open your mind. Open your mind. Now let the words in. Everyone's watching. You can do this. I think I get it. Okay, tell me, tell people what you're seeing or feeling right now. I'm feeling. Yeah, rub your temples. That's very good. Yeah. George Clooney. What? <laughs> so annoying. Is it right? That's absolutely no. correct. I cannot believe yes. you just got that. We did. What? We still got it. Lena, was that not who you texted? I have spent hours trying to figure out how they do this. And I'm it a magician just in the crazy. Magic Castle. I do not understand how you do this. Lena has <laughs> been upset about this for a year and a, a year. <laughs> it's just a bond. We've been working, Matilda and I worked together for so many months and it just ha- it just happened one day. It just happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, 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 bonding, the bonding was clear on screen. Now, Danny, I want to talk about you bonding with this cat because in this movie, <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, Julia Roberts! Nikki. I just had a, a vision. No, Julia Roberts. You saw it in the chat. Come on, Danny. Yeah, come I on, didn't Danny. know Come on, You could all see that. I'm so <laughs> Danny. Oh, I thought it was just me. <laughs> um, Danny, like I said, a little bonding with the cat. Brilliant yeah. physical comedy. I thought of John Ritter when I watched you because he oh, was a nice. brilliant physical comedian, and this was a joy to watch. And I can't imagine, first of all, how exhausted were you at the end of those days that you had those fights with the cat on set? Was that like a workout? And sort of, how did you do that? I don't know how you did it. Uh, it was letting go. So thank you, first of all. I was a huge fan of Three's Company. Um, working with Lena, it's my second time. So I got to work with her on a film called Tiger Hunter. And I put into my contract that I work with her on every film she does for the rest of uh, her career. Um, <laughs> and she told me uh, that this would be a complete departure. There'd be a lot of physical comedy involved. I love physical comedy. I thought that was gonna be really exciting and just kind of fun to dive into this world. And in terms of the physicality, they would give me pillows to put under my shirt. Sometimes this weird like headless squirrel mushy doll. 
to simulate the VFX, <laughs> what the real score would look like. And then it was just a lot of like, okay, just kind of run, dance, jerk your head around and move your body. And it was like dance. It was just letting go. It looked like I was getting electrocuted a lot, just kind of running around. <laughs> and uh, eventually we found something that looked like I was getting attacked by a cat, but I, it, was, it was all in here. <laughs> Actually, I've been attacked by a few animals in my life. So I use that as, uh, as my acting prep work. Who knew, who knew, you know, life, you know, what it brings you, you can use it in your craft. You never know, right? Getting attacked by animals is a good thing. Okay, so we're gonna open up um, some of the questions um, now to the press. So uh, when I call your name, you can unmute yourself and you can ask a, a, your question. So for the first question, we have Tessa Smith from Mama's Geeky. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi guys, uh, then my question's for Kate. There's a lot of comic book influence in this story. So are you a comic book fan yourself? And if so, which ones are your favorites? Uh, I am a comic book fan, but not a traditional comic book fan. I, 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 and I've, you know, I, I've been answering this question since the book came out and I always feel kind of chagrined. What I grew up with and what I love is uh, Charlie Brown and, and Peanuts. And I, and I actually still read a Peanuts cartoon every morning. It is like it shaped my whole childhood and it still shapes my sensibility. And so when I was writing the book and I, I had Flora love uh, comic book superheroes, um, I, I, when I turned it in, it didn't have a superhero in it. And my editor said, oh, you're gonna have to make up uh, a superhero. And I, and I thought I can't do that, but then, you know, I did. Um, and that's in Tendesto. And it was really fun. So then I started doing, I went back and did prep work on, you know, by reading superhero comics and stuff. So kind of backwards. Yeah. Kind of fun prep. Um, <laughs> our second question. Um, thank you, Tessa. Our second question is from Gray Hauser from Monorail News. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Is it the first question or the second question? <laughs> um, let me see. I don't know. Take Whatever feels your good, Gray. Choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, to Kate, um, what changes from the book to the movie were your favorite? You know, it, this is funny because it goes a little bit with what uh, Allison said about being able to watch yourself in this. And it, it's not my first experience having uh, a book turned into a movie. And uh, and you you kind of watch. Um, and think, oh, that's different, or this is different, or all of that went out the window. I mean, I had read Brad's script, and I liked it a lot, but when I sat down and watched the movie, I watched it as my eight-year-old self. There was like no, it, it, I didn't compare it to the book or anything. I just was so in it that I can't even, it, it feels to me like what happened between the script and the cast and the, and the directing is that the, the themes of the book uh, are amplified and so the, the heart is even bigger and uh, the wackiness is even bigger and this and also just the power of connection has been amplified and so it's just um, whatever is different is more and better does that make sense yeah what an answer this is so exciting to hear, Kate. I, I haven't, we haven't, or for, for us, we haven't been able to hear her field questions about the book or the movie. So this is like very exciting for us. That's, well, yeah, hopefully that's, that's the last time I'll talk. So, okay. No, no, no. They're all Kate questions and I cannot <laughs> wait. <laughs> I've got a list of Kate questions. Yeah, okay. Same. Our third question is from Laura Sirico from The Nerds of Color. You can unmute yourself. Hi. Uh, no, I'm excited because I have, I, uh, I don't know which question to ask, but um, yeah, for Danny and Ben, you guys got to extend your comedy wings for some of the scenes. Well, what was improv versus the script? Because like, there's a lot of scenes that you could have like just gone extra. So which did you guys put, which one was improv and which one was just the script? First of all, I love the sentence, expand your comedy wings. I love, oh. I've never heard that before. I love that. <laughs> Look at Danny fly. Um, Dan, I heard they didn't <laughs> give Danny a script. <laughs> uh, Lena would probably know better than both of yeah. us, by the way, because she would she she would be the one to be like, no, just just do the script or yeah, yeah, just go, go, go. <laughs> these guys follow scripts. Every, they, they add a little something, something to everything. And I, I think that's what it was. Like the script that Brad wrote was so good, and Lena yeah. gives us room to play, but um, w with the knowledge of like we're not going to be like, what's going on? What's that dinosaur over there? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's always within the boundaries of what that scene is, and 
only if it heightens either exactly what said the the emotion or the comedy of the scene without bringing it somewhere uh, elsewhere. So um, I'm sure Danny and I uh, played. I know Matilda and I definitely improvised a couple times, which was very exciting. We sang a whole song about butts that I believe is still in the movie. Um, Danny, what do you think? Do you remember any in particular? I'm just trying to think. I think it was a lot of, well, I mean, first of all, Ben and I have history of fighting for the last three years as brothers mm -hmm. in an animated show. So that mm -hmm. was very helpful. It was very mm -hmm. easy to chase him with the tranquilizer gun and, and exciting. <laughs> um, so I think it's hard to say. I don't know. But I think there was always just like what you said. I think we started with the script. It was so good. Obviously, the world is so fully realized, and then we would just play while we were chasing each other. I think a couple of times I commented on your speech, maybe. That was yeah, I think when we were at the door, it was me and Ben Ainsworth, and you came into the door, and Le that was a time that Lena's like, all right, now go go have go have fun, little boys. Go have fun. <laughs> and, <something like> that. <laughs> and I like that you're kind of like action heroes in this, too. You have like a showdown. Like, it's like... Danny know. is a straight up action villain in this the only reason is he's he is it's incredible i love watching Danny. i was so excited for this and i'm glad you mentioned twirly mustache because i showed up to set with a real twirly-ish mustache Stop. thinking like they're gonna love this it's gonna be a huge twirly mustache i'm gonna villain it up and as soon as i stepped on stage lena was like shave it yeah. <laughs> too much this is a children's movie get rid of that weird thing you know what you're trying to do it's a little too much but i was so excited uh, i mean matilda is so incredible my first scene with her i'm like a villain and she has so much emotion behind her in her eyes i was i felt like i was just like an evil person like right away and i felt so bad but i was also just just taken i was in awe of her power on screen so it was so exciting for me to be, just to be part of this world well it was it's incredible it was inc incredible to watch. Um, I'm wondering now, because I kind of thought about that twirly mustache thing, if you and I should play the celebrity game, that if you should think of a, never mind. <laughs> oh my God. I Louis Roberts. Should. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> okay, our fourth question comes from Max Borg from Movie Player Italy, all the way from Italy. Is he in Italy? Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes, so uh, my question is for uh, Lena. Was it intentional to have a sort of mini DuckTales reunion? Because you have Danny, Ben, Bobby, and Kate all in the movie. <laughs> you know, after we got the first couple, then yeah. Then we're like, yeah, let's just go with it. Let's bring them all. <laughs> Everybody from that show is fantastic. And then we just were enjoying it. We like threw in like Bobby's reading the DuckTales comic at the beginning. You'll see some ducks with like the different colors of their collars matching the characters in Danny's office. So yeah, after a while, we realized that the best gold mine in all of television is DuckTales and we must bring everybody from there onto the movie. <laughs> Lena threw Easter eggs throughout that whole movie. There's like, Lena put little fun little things for people who like comic books and Disney throughout the whole film, which I think is really exciting. I was actually gonna ask about that. So if you could just like throw out a couple, are you allowed to throw out a few that people can look for when they're watching the movie? You no, know, there's so many, there, there's a whole world for just the comic book nerds. There's like, if you're a comic book person, which you know I grew up with, my brothers were like, if you go into the comic, ca uh, comic cave, which is the comic book store, there's a giant penny and there's, um, which would be in the bat cave originally, you'll see Mysterio with the goldfish uh, thing over his head. Um, some people will know who the ventriloquist dummy is, the mobster dummy next to the TV. So there's all that comic book world references for people will, will see those. Um, and then there's a, a lot of DuckTales things, like I said. There's a lot of Allison Hannigan love. Like things yeah, like there is. Her past and world, there's stuff from Buffy <laughs> hidden in the background. And then there's a lot of things, there's, you know, different books of Kate's that are hidden throughout. So there's just lots of, lots of treats everywhere. I love the fact that you brought really the superhero element into it. And when um, Ulysses jumps out of the donut shop and lands like a superhero. <laughs> you know, squirrels do that. If you look up squirrel superhero landing, you will find that squirrels, because our CGI people were very particular. They're like, oh, we don't want to do things that don't feel like what a squirrel would do. I'm like, oh, no, no, a squirrel does that. <laughs> you look, Google it and you will see. I love that it's part of your job to, to research squirrels. Best job ever. Okay, our next question comes from Amy Fulcher from As the Bunny Hops. Ooh. Aww. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, so I was wondering, I'm always curious when there are computer generated animals, when you're making a movie, how challenging that is. And I know you said you had a trained squirrel. I saw that on your Instagram, Lena, after Nikki mentioned it. But I just wanna know how that all came together and what the challenges were of working with a character who's not there. I'm gonna have Matilda feel that first because Matilda, you were acting for the most part alongside nothing. 
<laughs> you tell them. Yeah, it was kind of like at points, well, actually, Lena, you were kind of my squirrel at some points. You had this like little stuffed animal squirrel that you would like pretend was doing the scenes so I could kind of get an idea of what it would be like. And then for the most part, like during the actual scenes, I had this like gray, creepy, like rat thing that kind of looked like a rat. It was really like <laughs> kind of creepy. And then of some other times, I didn't have anything. And I had to like pretend there was something there when it was nothing. So yeah, it was definitely interesting and kind of challenging, but yeah. I have a question for you, Matilda. You got to say so many cool lines in this and don't say what it is because I don't want to spoil it, but you got to say a line that Robert Downey Jr. says in Endgame. And <laughs> you're looking at me like, I don't know. You know which one I mean? I don't think so. Are we allowed to say what it is? I think so. I don't, I don't even it, remember what it, it is. It. I, don't I love you 3000. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. You said it to oh, um, I remember. Ben, yeah. <laughs> I like that line. So it's like <laughs> you and RDJ, toe to toe. Um, but I wanted to ask you what your favorite line was. What was your, because there's like wholly unanticipated occurrences and all these fun ones. What was your favorite? Yeah, there were some some great ones. I like, I mean, I feel like Holy Begumba is always a good one. <laughs> yeah, it was, and you delivered it brilliantly. Okay, our next question is from Courtney Howard from Fresh Fiction TV. Hi everybody, good morning. Good morning. Um, we sort of touched on it a little bit earlier, but there's so many different styles of comedy in this from basic punchline delivery to broad physical comedy and you all are so great at handling it. And I'm sort of curious how your whole process went uh, going about this sort of went for you. Maybe Matilda, if you want to answer some this or, or Allison, since I know Danny and Ben sort of touched on it. Um, Allison, do you want to? Oh. Uh, sure. I mean, you know, it, Lena was, was so great about um, sort of establishing everybody's um, physicality with their characters during rehearsal and everything. So, um, but I, I remember having a lot of fun trying to work out the awkward entrance with Ben um, of our, like, do we hug? Do we shake hands? All and right. That was, that was really fun to do. Um, just the, I love anything where I get to be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> that was a standout moment, actually. I really, no I really noticed, I actually watched the movie twice and I watched it the second time. It was just, there was yeah. so much nuance to it. It was so no, I have, Honestly, I could have just done that all day. It was so, like, because <laughs> everything we did was just sort of different. Um, but it was, I, I really enjoyed it. I think at one point I felt your nose. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. There were 1,000 takes of that. Yeah. It's, very, it's very fun to act in something like Allison has been in so much comedy and she's been doing such great stuff for so long. It's like so fun for that moment to, to try to find it with her and with Lena. We literally tried 1,000 things. There could be a weird super cut of us weirdly trying to say hello to each other. <laughs> We need that super cut. I don't Just think saying. we do. I really don't think we do. <laughs> oh, we have it on our editor's computer. <laughs> we went through many. Okay, um, the fabulous Carla Renata from the Curvy Film Critic is next. I was Go. looking for the mute button. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> How y'all doing? This Hi, How are you? Hey, hey, this question is for Allison. Um, Phyllis goes through so many major lengths to inspire herself with her writing, like getting that old typewriter. I was interested to know what lengths you've ever gone through to prepare to get into the zone of a role. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, oh, wow. I mean, I, I guess I'm not as messed as I should be. Um, I mean, I tried a lot of lollipops for this role. So that was, you know, that was difficult so hard. Um, but uh, I don't know. You know, actually, I, okay. I did um, before Buffy and uh, I did an episode of a show called Touched by an Angel. And I was playing a teen that was um, going to give up, I, that was pregnant and going to give up the baby for adoption and then 
like took the baby and say it was drama. It was a drama. But um, so to prepare for they they show the birthing scene, um, the doctor who was going to be on set said, oh, hey, I have a woman who's giving birth. And she said, you can come watch. And I was like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it, so it, and I, I think it was probably I mean, maybe it was like 20 or something. I don't know. It was, it, um, so I walk into this room. And this woman is like in the final stages of labor, labor, and I'm like, ah, uh, do I? What do we, like talk about awkward greeting? Um, and then the doctor's like, come on, and I'm like, okay. And so I'm like meeting this stranger and now, watching her give birth, um, and of course it was incredible. But she also made it look so easy that I'm like, this isn't really going to help for the scene because I feel like it's not as dramatic as it should be for a TV show. Because um, she made it like she honestly, she lied. She made it look real easy. Um, and, but I got to watch her, and I immediately started bawling because it's so beautiful and everything. <laughs> and then it was just like, okay. Bye. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess it was like her sixth child, so she didn't really care. Of this <laughs> you know what but. she deserves? She deserves the Jack and Rose Titanic statue. Oh, That's totally. She needs and it. And maybe like a spa day with six kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're almost finished. Real quick before I wrap, I want to thank you all. Um, but just to wrap things up, I'm going to go quickly down the line. There's a lot of snacks in this movie and it made me very hungry. So I want to go down the line and you choose the best snack that all appeared in this film. Lollipop, cheese puff, donut, or pop tart. I'll start with you, Kate. Oh, cheese puffs, duh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Allison? Oh, I'm going to go lollipop. Hmm. Still in character, still in character. <laughs> okay, Lita? Oh, cheese o mania, cheese puffs. For yeah. sure. <laughs> ben? Donuts. Are you crazy? Donuts. <laughs> Six of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Danny? Giant donut. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, the giant. <laughs> and we'll finish with our star, Matilda. I'm actually going to go with Pop-Tart. I like Pop-Tarts. <laughs> but wait, you left out peanut m and M. Oh, oh, great oh, snack great. during a movie, mind you. I mean, that's, that, that might have... Oh, and that uh, that overtakes lollipop for me. Yeah, actually, you like eating that gross mildewed one at the end, huh? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of mildew references in this movie. <laughs> right? I'm not thinking mildew is called is what the sequel sequel is going to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Kate, I hope there. I I hope that Flora and Ulysses are still dancing around in your head, and that there might be a sequel one day. But I want to thank you all for joining. Thank you for this fun conversation. Thank I'm going to go you. have some donuts and lollipops and all that now i'm really super hungry um this is an incredible movie flora and ulysses everybody can see it on disney plus on february 19th thank you all again you're amazing thank, thank you, you nikki thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. thanks everyone. everybody bye